if they do not turn out heavy or he gets a lower percentage in these districts, then uh, it's in favor of Warnock. So I think Walker can win this, but it's gotta be Republicans wanting to come out and, and vote. The runoff for the Senate seat in Georgia between Raphael Warnock, the incumbent, and the Republican Herschel Walker. A most significant race because if Warnock wins, the Democrats will have an advantage 51 to 49. If Herschel Walker wins, it's 50-50 on committee assignments and much of the day-to-day -day business of the Senate. Joining us now is someone who knows the state inside and out, former Georgia Congressman Doug Collins. Congressman, good to have you with us. So uh, just looking above your, your right shoulder there, you got the Georgia Bulldogs football. Congratulations, by the way, big win over Georgia Tech. Probably the most Thank famous you. Georgia Bulldog ever was number 34, Herschel Walker. Uh, he was a, you know, Trump definitely recruited him. So Trump is all in on this race and Trumpism, if you will. Uh, in places like Georgia, where we've seen, you know, special elections and what happened, how much of an influence is Donald Trump playing in this race? Um, in the primary, it played a great deal. And I think that's one of the reasons why Herschel was able to come through the race uh, and win the primary so easily. It still helps in the general uh, election, and it turns out Republican voters. I mean, is there a part that it might not have as uh, good of an effect, say, around uh, some of the suburban areas? Maybe. The issue, I think, though, once it gets to the general election in Georgia, is it comes down to the candidates and how their message is being perceived and how they're actually getting uh, their own vote out. So uh, this one has been a very difficult race. I think both uh, Warnock and Walker would look back at this and uh, and say that they're both struggling at, in the general to find uh, traction with their voters over various issues. Have they moved a little bit on their messaging? Have they learned kind of what didn't work? And what I thought during the general election, it wasn't so much a, a referendum on Biden, although the Democrats made it on Trump. Is, is Joe Biden playing more of um, a role in this election? He is in this runoff, and, it, and it's reason because Warnock has voted basically every time with Biden. So it, that nationalizing of the election here in Georgia will play into uh, favor of Walker. I think what you saw around the country during the general election was, frankly, it goes always in my mind, goes back to candidates and it goes back to message in the sense of are you talking to the voters in the district? And very few of these elections, for whatever reason, became nationalized, but a lot of them became localized. And I think you saw that in New York, California. You saw it around the country. Even in what seats where Democrats won the seat, they may have been closer. It was in the end the message that the Democrat incumbent had in those seats that you know gave him a one or two point advantage because of the messaging and and just a climate in which you know people wasn't sure maybe about the other candidate, the Republican in the race. So again, all of these come back down to the simple fact that candidates matter, messaging matters, and the messaging matters especially in these congressional races in some of the Senate seats as well. Are you speaking to the issues the voters want to hear about? Herschel Walker's taking the pounding on some of his personal issues in his life, whether they're true or not. We don't know, but it's the reality of politics. I'm assuming you still think Herschel Walker's going to win, otherwise we'd make some really big news. But assuming <laughs> he, he wins, what would have been the margin of victory? In other words, where does he have to do well? Uh, you, you know, I, I'll just say on a side note here, it's one of the best questions I've been asked out of a thousand interviews I've been giving in the last uh, few weeks um, over this race because you've hit the nail on the head, and that is early voting started uh, really quicker than most had assumed in Georgia, but it had happened in the Democrat county. So any early vote advantage right now, Warnock has probably a 25, 30 percent advantage in just these early vote numbers simply because they came from majority Democrat districts, where Herschel has got to do better than he did on, Jan on, on the uh, the general election is in districts like the 9th District of Georgia. That's my home district, Gainesville, the mountains of Northeast Georgia. Though in the northwestern corner, this is Marjorie Taylor Greene's district, the District 14, Rome, Dalton, those areas. And then really down around the 10th, which is Athens, the 8th, which is Warner Robins, Valdosta, more towards south middle Georgia. If those Republicans in those districts, which are, you know, are 25 to 35 districts, they turn out heavier, then Walker will win this race. If they do not turn out heavy or he gets a lower percentage in these districts, then uh, it's in favor of Warnock. So I think Walker can win this, but it's got to be Republicans wanting to come out and, and vote, as they did for the whole slate of Republicans in the state, except in this race.
Let me turn over to the House for a moment where you served and you were on the Judiciary Committee, so you went through the impeachments and all this other stuff. Okay. Should the Republicans uh, on day one have a dual track of, you know, kind of slowing down the Biden spending and, and the economy, fixing it, but also doing investigations and impeachment, which they have talked about, or is that going to be just a really big distraction and they're never going to win that messaging with the media? Uh, but is that fair game? And do you think they should do that? Uh, yes. In fact, if they don't have a dual track, if it becomes a single track on investigations and impeachment and other things that truly need to be done, you know, from Biden administration to the immigration issues at the border, to the withdrawal from Afghanistan, to Hunter Biden, all these issues, yes. But if that becomes all that it's about, then it will look just like the 2019 Democrats when they came in and all they wanted to do was harass uh, Donald Trump and, and, and try to impeach Donald Trump, of which I saw it firsthand. I think they have a good plan for that. Uh, I know most of the committees are you know, trying to balance the two of the idea of investigations and the idea of governing. Now, realizing that they're one third of the governing triad. So what they've got to do now, their job, most importantly, is to stop all of the Biden administration craziness when it comes to spending and some of the bills ranging from, you know, gun control legislation to others, and then, you know, craft ideas that get the most conservative bills passed through the Senate and then eventually signed by the, the president. Well, things that have to be done, such as the budget and appropriations and things like that. But they've got to be laser focused on the fact that they have to stop, but also do something as well. Congressman, we always learn from you. And I hope uh, you'll come back before the election because it's a biggie, whether people realize it or not. Everyone's looking at Georgia again. <laughs> so thanks again for being with us. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.